you cannot do. Over 2,000 years ago, you existed. When we go to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, around the world, around the universe, we cannot find any other God like you. The God that will die on our behalf just so we can have life. The God that will die just so we will be counted among the living. What a good God you are. We thank you. We bless your holy name. Amen.
over unto lavishousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man with truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let the sun go down, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole still no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that you may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgive one another, even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you. Here ends the passage. Did I say something wrong? Did I say something bad? What I said, is it not true? It is true. So if we are fighting for the kingdom of heaven, why should we have to be in this situation? Why should we not forgive each other? Why we should pop up some things in our heart which is not beneficial, which is not healthy for our body? Okay, it has been said, it has been read. When you go home, please, I am urging you, I am begging you, I am on my knees, and I'm saying, please, read it. Pray on it and ask God to protect you and ask God to guide you so that you'll be able to practice of it. Hallelujah. Amen. And the second one, which we are going to stand on it to pray, it is something that I want all of us to know. We are here. All of us know we are here to praise God. But some of us are just here. They don't know what is over there. So, the Bible says something. I want this to see what the next scripture is, and then we stand on it to pray. Since today it is time for what? For us to sing and to praise God. Right now we say we are here to go to heaven. When you go over there, what are we going to do? To sing to praise God, sing to worship God, sing to adore God. So that is what we are going to do. I'm not going to bother you with so many prayers, but only one prayer, which is the one, uh, the next uh, scripture coming on right now, please. Uncle, the next one, please. Oh, okay, it is even there. Which is what? Matthew 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. You see all of us here. You see how we all look so beautiful. You see how, I mean, it's hard the work of God. Right? So beautiful that we have to do what? We have to come and worship God. But it is rather unfortunate. I didn't say it is the Bible. Many are called, but few are chosen. Ask yourself today, are you among of the those that are chosen? That is what I want us to stand on today and to pray. I want all of us to stand up right now. If you know you don't know your stand, Whatever is blocking you, whatever is preventing you, whatever you know from the previous passage that was read, it is part of you that will prevent you from your chosen. It is time right now. Let us all go from a God deep down our heart and pray to God and ask God to plant us and to give us the power that when the time comes, we will also get what eternal life, but we will not be part of that, we will be left behind. Let us pray. 
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give we you the honor. You. Father, we thank you because you are God, you are King, you are you in philosophy of God. Awesome. There is none over them, my Lord, my God, that can be compelled with you. Father, my Lord, my God, today we are before you. You have instructed us, my Lord, my God, how we have to live as Christians to God. As you are living toward us, my Lord, my God, as not all the past years, my Lord, my God. Not all of us, many are called, my Lord, my God, very much. There's a song that says, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven and we will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy world be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever.
God and speak to God. Amen. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is the word of God. I said, Chris, go ahead and ask her. She said, how long do I have? What do I need to do? And her other question was, um, do I need to exalt? Most of the time, when I talk to people, the, the question they ask me about is, how much am I getting paid for this? <laughs> she never once said anything about, how much am I getting paid for this? Yeah. How long do I have? What do I need to do? Do I need to exalt? And ever since then, we formed a relationship. So it is only right that on music day, we also give her the stage to grace us once again with her beautiful voice. Her name is Minister, but I call her Psalmist, Miss Maureen Binney. Praise faithfulness.
here with us. Hallelujah. Everywhere you are, the Lord is present. All we need to do is tune in into His presence. He's ever present. He's ever present. He's filled the whole earth. Even in your deepest, darkest moments, He's there. You just have to acknowledge His presence. And He'll be turned on for you. Jehovah 
Russia has triumphed. Sound the loud timbrel. For his people, they are free.
could do in my own ministry. What I want to do as I strive to be a child of God. He doesn't need much introduction. He hates introduction. The last time he was here, I was like, I was going to do that myself. But he's grown, and I am proud. I was at the installation, and I cried. Because it was so beautiful to see the growth he has made, both as a pastor and as a doctor. I am so proud of him. I am proud to call him his friend, to call him my friend, and I'm proud to call him my brother and the colleague. Please welcome to the public. responsibility only to bring the best out of me. Amen. And so, Ms. Harrison, everyone writes the story of my life, you have a chapter. Yes. Yes. To, to all the elders, to all the deacons, to everybody, I'm glad I'm glad here. Yeah. It's, 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 My sister, uh, Dr. Yate, uh, Dr. Pat, for, for the, she's coordinated the music ministry for God knows how many years. And for this honor and this invitation to be here with you all, uh, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. Good to see everybody. Good to be back home. Amen. Amen. Um, I bring you greetings from my family. Uh, my, my wife and daughter's going to be here for one museum. Yada. But guess who is here? My daddy. She's been here already, and thank you for the love and everyone that for sharing. So, God bless you all. Um, and so, greetings from everybody. Anyway, this morning, let me be honest with you. In my walk, I've always asked God for confirmations. That's that's how my walk has, with God has been. Right. Some people literally hear clearly from God, like my son, my son. My daughter, my daughter, they hear them call them Mr. Harrison, Mr. Harrison. Me my own, I tell God, confirm your word for me. Amen. This morning, I see so much confirmation to assure me that the Spirit of God is here. Half of my message, she decided to preach it. So you might as well pick up a microphone, come and start next to me. She preached half of my message. And honestly, in the, in the, during the time of worship, 
I almost changed my message. Oh my God. During the time of worship, I almost changed my message. Because I had a message on worship. And when I saw how things were going on, the atmosphere, I almost changed it for us to talk on worship. But I'll, I'll throw it in there. We'll have to talk about it one way or the other. Because the Spirit of God is in this place. Amen. As directed by the Spirit and as the, the, the leadership of the music ministry chose, they chose this month and filled the month with what? Empowerment by music to do God's work. To be empowered by music to do God's work. Let's share a word of prayer first. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this awesome time we've had in your presence. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you in this house. Thank you for your move in our midst. Thank you for your, 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 your rulership in our midst. We submit to your authority, Holy Spirit. And Father, I present myself before you. I hide behind the cross. And ask that you speak to your people. Your words never come out void. It comes with a purpose. And so as the Spirit of God, as, as your word comes forth from this altar, this, this afternoon, May it accomplish every purpose for which you gave it. have for it in the name of Jesus. Bring us transformation. Enlighten the eyes of our understanding. May we see different dimensions of you as we encounter and fellowship your word. Show yourself strong in our midst. Glorify your name. May, may this afternoon and today's service be a service that will generate and catapult this ministry to another level in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm entitled my short message more than a song. But the Lord is the, the, the agenda of God for the people of God is to empower us. The story of creation told us, and He said that He told when He created man, He says, Let us create man in our image. And after He created man, He blessed man and said, Be fruitful and multiply. That blessing, every other living being had it. So when He created plants, He told them, Multiply. When he created animals, he told them multiply. When he created man, he told them he, 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 he blessed man and said, be fruitful and multiply. But he added something else. He said, for man, have dominion, subdue the earth. Fill the earth, subdue the earth, and have dominion. That was the agenda of God when he created man. That's right. So you and I, right from the story of creation, when God created us, he created us to have a certain level of dominion. That we will win. Just like he says, let's create man in our image. And one of the images of God is his majesty. One of the images of God is his, 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 his glorious knowledge. He's sovereign. He, he's a majestic God. And so when he created us, man, he created us to come and have dominion on this earth. By reason of that mindset, it is the purpose of God that in any time there is a gathering of the church, mm. there is a moment. Oh my God. Thank you. Without empowerment, there can be no dominion. Yes. It's as simple as that. Listen, if you don't, if you are not empowered, that dominion will be like without dominion, without empowerment, there is no dominion. And so God's agenda anytime the people of God gather is to get us to that place where He has the opportunity to empower us. That's right. And so the assembly of the brethren, when we get together, he told us not to forsake it because he has an agenda. Amen. Anytime we gather, it's an opportunity for God to empower his people. Yes. Because all he wants us to do is to reign and rule and have dominion. Amen. That is his mindset. Yes. Now, with that mindset, he creates that opportunity for us to have dominion. For this reason, we also, since the day we had. Do not cease to pray for you, to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. Be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So it is my mindset that we will be filled with his will and get to a place of spiritual understanding. Do you know why? Because we don't like love. That's spiritual things, spiritual things. That's spiritual things. Spiritual things are spiritual things. This physical world, whether you like it or not, is being run by a spiritual world. Thank you. And so until you get to that place of a spiritual understanding, you will think life is a coincidence. And so his will is that anytime we gather, 
What can I do to bring my children to a place of a spiritual understanding? Because in that spiritual understanding, that is why I can empower them to take their place in our dominion. That's right. Empowerment through music. I'll get to the music. Thank no, you. I'll, I'll, I'll shout out the music. I'll get there. <laughs> And so he empowers us to a place of spiritual understanding that we may walk worthy of, the, of him. And so one way is to bring us to a place of spiritual number two is to bring us transformation by his word and his spirit. Transformation. Transformation by his word and his spirit. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says that do not be conformed to this world, but be, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Being transformed by the renewal of, the, of your mind. Renewal of your mind comes with stepping up of your faith. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Right. And so anytime we tell you, and then there is a word of Christ dwelling in our midst, our, our faith is being stirred up. That's right. And the stirring of your faith is what brings you to a place of renewal. And that renewal is what brings you transformation. Transformation is just being changed from an old nature to a new nature. An old mindset to a new mindset. An old self to a new self. An old place where you think you don't have dominion to a place where you know you have dominion. You dominion. Thank you. Because that is where the Lord wants us, that is where he wants us to. So he desires to bring us transformation by the renewal of, of his, his word. Hallelujah. Amen. So based on the scriptures from Colossians chapter 3. From Colossians chapter 3, I'm trying to do this quick. I, there are three things I tell I wanted us to learn. Number one, that we are all ministers of the gospel. Amen. It says, teach and admonish each other. It wasn't an assignment given just to the pastors of the church. That's right. But in fact, you know that there are more people you talk to more than you talk to your pastors. Yeah. <laughs> Let's think about it. We spend three hours in church on a Sunday. Where did this one? How many people call you this week? No, no. <laughs> but there is truth. There are more people you speak to on the basis of being brother and sister in Christ. And so when somebody calls you to talk to you, are you admonishing each other? We say that we just spent three hours here today, right? On Sunday, um, uh, maybe during the week, next hour or two prayer meetings here and there. In the totality, less than 10 hours a week, we spend as a body of Christ. But yet still, there are more people in the, in the church that we spend hours talking to. And so if you are going to wait for Reverend Kennedy to be the one to teach each other and admonish each other, are we heading somewhere? That is why the scripture says that you and I, we are, the, we are what? The ministers of gospel. You and I ought to admonish each other. Because any conversation I have with you needs to be a conversation of empowerment. Yes, yes. Listen, if you have somebody that when you call, after you call them, all you do, your spirit is down. You are talking to the wrong person. Yes. Anytime you have a conversation with a brother or a sister in Christ, you need to be empowered. Yes. Anytime you talk to a sister, a brother on an issue, you need to come out of that conversation knowing very well that you've gained the solution to that problem through the wisdom of God. Yes. That is why it says, let the word of Christ richly dwell. If he had received one, if it was just reserved for the pastors, the pastoral job would be one of the most difficult things to do. But it says for all of us, because you may not get me, but you get a brother in Christ. You may not get me, but you get a sister in Christ. That sister in Christ ought to be filled with that word. So that when you ask them something, they speak the mind of God and the wisdom of God for your solution. All of us, it was not just meant for a priesthood. All of us are, are ministers of the gospel. That is the first lesson we learned. Lesson number one. Lesson number two. I'm getting to the music now. The music minister is a teacher of the word. Now, can I talk to them? And I'm not talking about Mr. Harrison. And that's where we all get it wrong. We think the music ministers in the church. My, my, my honorable God. Each and every one of us are ministers of music. Each and every one of us are ministers of music. Centennial Band, each and every one of us are ministers of music. Worship team, 
each and every one of us are ministers. The, 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 the minister of music, Mr. Harrison, is just like uh, the, the, the head who, 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 who coordinates. But each and every one of us who submits to the, to the, to the calling and to the, to the authority of, of, the, of the department of music, we are all ordained ministers of the music. And so he says, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spirituals. So in our music ministry, we ought to teach. In our music ministry, we ought to admonish. In our music ministry, we ought to, we ought to encourage. We cannot therefore underestimate how important it is for us to make conscious effort to ensure that the word we sing dwells within us. My work is made easy today because let me tell you, every song that has been ministered today, my God, it says in Psalms, in hymns, and in spiritual, it's meant to admonish us, it's meant to teach us, it's meant to encourage us, it's meant to empower us. And how many can testify that every song that I come forth this, this, this morning came to accomplish something in your life? Thank you.